up at five in the morning. There aren't very many people, but I've had plenty of companionship from my timer today because I'm doing these time course assays. Um, so an assay is just like an experiment where you're measuring things basically. Um, and so what I'm doing is these like um, slot blot assays. Basically, it's a method where you mix like a radio labeled, so a radioactive RNA or DNA with the protein, and then you separate them with these filters and see where the labeled stuff ends up. And it allows you to measure like protein and RNA or DNA binding. Um, so more on this later, but first I wanna tell you about like just ex some things about experimenting in general um, and like time course in particular, but also like optimizing and troubleshooting and why that can be a pain, but why biochemistry is so cool to do. So um, back to the story. So I start with, I have like 15 seconds and then I have like 30, 30, like one minute, one and a half minutes, two and a half minutes, and then it starts getting longer. So it's like four, six, eight, 10, 15, 20. And those like couple minute ones are such a pain because it's not long enough for you to like do anything, even like go to the bathroom, especially because you're in the hot room and so you're all suited up and you can't like, don't want to like have to unglove and scan and all that stuff, um, test to make sure you're not radioactive. So those couple of minute time points are so annoying, which is where podcasts come in really ha handy. I highly recommend Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, keeping me sane. Um, but yeah, and so I'm doing like these two stagger time courses. So I have like two different timers or I have one timer going, but I have like my schedule set out. So like every 15 minutes on this like spreadsheet, I know what to do and then I like check it off when I'm done. Um, but so today I just wanted to kind of like show you what it looks like. Um, so it's kind of a weird post, but uh, I didn't have time to like really make a full um, post and I'll direct you to this other post if you want more details. Um, but sometimes people ask me like what things actually look like in a lab um, and what type of stuff you do. Um, the thing with biochemistry is that a lot of times um, what you actually do is a lot, a lot of troubleshooting. Um, so today's one of those troubleshooting days where I'm trying out a couple of different like protein and RNA concentrations to try to find um, the best one to work for this pair. So sometimes you might see in like protocols that you need to optimize, you might need to optimize. Well, yeah, you, you're going to need to optimize a lot for these experiments. So a lot of times like it, it, some experiments is kind of like cut and dry recipes. Um, but when you want to study really cool stuff, often there's not like if it's something like no one's done before for this specific thing or whatever, or basically you're gonna have to be, get kind of creative and try different things out. And so a lot of my PhD has been doing that. Um, and, but I finally got this to work for one thing and I'm trying to get it to work for another thing. Um, so just need to optimize for the different conditions. Um, and yeah, so let's take a look at what it actually looks like and I'll show you it um, in a cold, so like, non-radioactive um so just with like water and that sort of thing um and gotta go though um so i will i've actually recorded that video earlier so i'll slice it in here because right now i've got to go to my next time point um yeah so at the beginning they're like 30 minute time points or whatever so it's um, easier and it's not in the hot room so it's out here and i can just like make a video in between um so yeah so hope you enjoy before when I told you about slot plots, I was mainly talking about how I could use them to measure binding affinity. Um, so like how tightly a protein likes to bind to a nucleic acid. Um, so like an RNA or DNA in my case, I'm doing like an RNA. Um, so I've radio labeled this RNA. So I've labeled it with like this radioactive um, phosphorus at the end, um, more of radio labeling in a different post. Um, but this allows me to like track it. And then I use this slot blot to track, uh, to see, to separate the bound, the protein bound from the unbound, um, using these cool membranes that I cut out. So you have a nitrocellulose on top, which is going to capture the protein and any labeled nucleic acid. And on the bottom, the nucleic acid is going to flow through. And so you can do like set up a different concentration gradients um like a dilution series of your protein um and that's going to allow you to do this thing like to calculate the kd so the binding affinity and so i've done a post on kd um, on like salt thoughts for this purpose um and i've done a video on kd um but this isn't actually what i'm doing today today i'm doing this like time course release assay so i'm starting with the protein bounds to the radioactive um, nucleic acid and then I'm doing a chase. So I'm adding a high concentration of cold, so unlabeled RNA, of this, so the same RNA, but it's unlabeled. And this way, whenever the 
protein lets go of that initial um, labeled RNA that it was bound to, now it's gonna pick up an unlabeled RNA. Um, and so that labeled is gonna flow through. And so you'll see the amount of the labeled is going to decrease over time um, when you go, this was a bad one, but you can kind of see it decreasing over time. Um, so I have the time points going like, shh. but basically I have a lot of time points and they're staggered out at kind of like inconvenient time points. Don't worry, I haven't given up science for crafts. I'm just cutting some nylon membranes. Next up, the nitrocellulose. Membranes I cut out, uh, cut up, I keep them in these like bags. Um, and so now I'm ready to set up my sandwich. Um, so first I want to get like everything pre-wet. So I have three of these like filter papers. Um, they're similar, they're like just similar to the ones that you use for like a Western blot or that sort of thing. Then I have my nylon, which is going to go on top or bottom and is going to bind the nucleic acids that go through. And then my nitrocellulose, which is going to bind the proteins. Um, and so if I'm doing this for real, I try to just like touch from the edges and stuff. So I'm not getting grease and all that gunk, but for now, I'm not really worrying about that because I'm just trying to show you guys. Um, so I get these pre-wet and now I start setting up this filter thing. So on the slot plot. And so I'm using like the slot plot format, which is like these 48. So it's like six by eight. Um, I really wish that I could use this 96 well, this like dot blot. But for the life of me, I've never gotten it to get a good vacuum seal. And I spent way too long trying to get it to work that, and then just giving up. So I stick with the slot plot. So it has this like removable pieces and stuff. And basically it has this rubber gasket that's gonna help us get the seal. And I always put it on backwards, but it doesn't fit that way. Um, so it's gonna help keep the seal. And this goes in and now I'm ready to put um, the sandwich on. So I have the nut, the um, first is on the bottom is gonna go the filter pads. So I have three of them. And then my nylon, which is going to bind the nucleic acids. So that's going to be the label. That's um, the thing I have labeled. Um, and so if it's on top is going to go the nitrocellulose, which binds the proteins. And so if the nucleic acid is bound to the protein, it's going to get stuck in the top. If not, it's going to go through to the bottom. And then it's really hard to do this one handed while I'm taping. Sorry. Um, but basically then I just like put the corners down and now I'm going to hook it up to this vacuum filter. I'm going to um, set up the vacuum, which usually takes a lot of wrangling because you have to get the vacuum sealed right. Um, but it'll make this noise like, eh, and then when it gets good vacuum, it'll kind of like ease off and then I loosen the screws a little. So I'm not even going to try to do that with one handed. Um, but the basic idea is that then you do your experiments. I start um, by doing just like the buffer, so like pH stabilized salt water, um, and then pre-wet and make sure that I go for to all of the different lanes and make sure that it flows evenly because often it'll be like a lane or two where it'll like just like the vacuum's really weird there and it'll just like suck it right through and then spread out and then mess everything up, which is a real pain. So I make sure that all the lanes are like even and flowing at the same rate. And then I put my protein through and, or like the mixture of my protein and my nucleic acid. And then I do a, um, another wash afterwards with the buffer. Um, and then I do all my samples. And so if I'm doing a time course, it'll be time points over time. Um, and if it's not, I'll do it all at once. When it's done, I take the top off. I do it while it's, um, like still under vacuum. So it doesn't smear and stuff. And now I am want to put the membranes for storage. Um, so what I've done is like we have this saran wrap and I've cut it into these like strips. Once again, having a really hard time doing things one handed while trying to show you, but I have these strips of saran wrap and I'm going to lay them out on this cassette. So the cassette is the thing that's going to hold like the um the membranes with the screen on top that's going to collect the like the um radiation as it comes off and then like store it until i scan the screen um then it'll show me where the radiation was um 
So now I take these membranes and I'm going to stick them on the saran wrap and I let them dry for a few minutes and then I just cover it up except it'll be bound more and then no, typically I can hold like three of these in a cassette so I put them like one of the other and then I store it while I do the others and then I'm going to put the screen on top and basically when the so radio radiation um the release of the radioactive um decay particles is like random like over time um so we talk about like a half-life which is like the average time it takes for half of it to decay so half of it to like let off that radiation but it's random when it happens um and so we don't want to just like wait and count the counts as they come off um and they do not enough signal and that sort of thing. So what we do is we put the screen on top and the screen is going to actually like when the radiact, it's gonna react with the um, radiation particles and actually the, it's like this phosphor storage screen and it's gonna get into this like weird, like kind of excited state on um, the, the molecules in the screen. They're gonna get kind of like excited, but they're kind of like in this state where they can get unexcited. Um, so it's, um, kind of similar to fluorescence in the sense that you have like it's holding energy and then it's going to release energy but in this case it's holding energy in a more stable form um that then when we scan it with like um a laser in this like machine then it'll give off that energy and so it'll do it all at once like on demand kind of and so all of the built up radiation so when the radiation comes out it's going to come out right onto the screen and then it's going to be like right above where the radiation was on these and so where the radiation is, is going to correspond to like the well that it was in. Um, and so it'll be like, you'll see like a grid of the different like lines, like um, for the different wells. Um, and then you compare how much was on the protein line versus how much was on like the nucleic acid. So how much was like bound versus unbound. A couple years ago, I made a video to show what this actually looks like to scan the screen um, and then blank the screen. Um, and so I thought I'd show you that. The Titan scanner. I have this screen and one side I've exposed to my sample and I want to see where the radioactive stuff is. And so I take this and I stick it on this mount. And then this is flipped over and goes into here. And I close the screen. And then the laser is going to come and it's gonna excite it. And when the, um, the electrons get excited, then they untrap and then they fall back down and they let out light. And then that light gets um, captured by a detector and it gets amplified and it gets turned into a um, digital signal. And then we use this software um, to help us um, quantify it. Around what you have to do is you want to blank it because it's kind of like an etch a sketch, you need to um, clear it out. And so, well, how you do this is using light. So, we have this light table, and when we, um, when we turn it on, it lights up, and what it's doing is it's shining all of this light, and it's all the electrons are excited and they fall back down and then they're ready to do it again. And then when we're done, we stick the screens in this drawer and keep them hidden from light so that they don't um, get over, um, 